Hello and welcome back to the channel. Right, actually out of bones here today. Going for and done because everything that I cleared a little while ago is sort of back from a little winter clear out. But before I do it, I've actually got getting behind this heap and put a bit of wall back up, which I nudged last time and. I should have done better and come back and put it up before it got like this, but evidently I didn't. So I'm going to do it now. But fundamental part of the wall is a great big stone which went through the dunk and went up in the middle of the field. So I'm going to get that one first. Now I'm going to get the bolt bucket on the front tail handler so I can have a little bit of a clear and a move the dung around oh, out my way. Oh, pop here. Move dung out my way so I can work without being completely stirred in poo, basically. So, right, a little bit of a tie up. Try not to get a random stone lifted as well, so that doesn't end up in the spreader later on. Well, should be right. Save me a job of having to dig out more. Right, I have a platform to work on. Let's get to it. Firstly, I've got to dig this out a bit, so it's got to get worse before it gets better. So I'll quickly rip out in there, and I'll start putting it back in. <laughs> I've just perched the stone up there because it didn't fit from where it came out. So it's not the it's not the greatest bit of wall I've done, but hopefully it still stays standing. The main thing about stone walling is anyone can do it, and if anyone thinks they can't do it, well, it's pretty simple. You keep putting stones on one one top of the other, um, and if it falls down, it won't good enough. You've got to do it again, and after two or three times, you soon figure out how to get things balanced and work so it doesn't fall down. So trial by error, but in the end you get there. So it is something that anyone can do. Now, I'm gonna get a spreader on, get a load on, and get manure flying around here. So, because as I've said before, in sort of future videos, it is, all our dunks will kind of be out by mid-February. End of January, mid-February, 
at the latest, then we can't really spread anymore because it won't rot away fast enough for when we want to start cutting. So, get the trade off, get the spread on. So I think messing up, messing up my morning now. Well, it's only for anyone that thinks fast track to absolutely wonderful and absolutely perfect. It's really not. Um, I'm a bit pissed off right now as well because I've been all warm trying to get this sort of going. Um, I've got hydraulic failure, so my hydraulics won't work. So I'm going to take this tractor down and the new T5 that we haven't really put hugely on camera yet and a look around. We're going to chuck a T5 on this great big spreader, spreader I am, and just get things moving. So it's not going to be as fast and as simple. I'm going to have to stay on flat fields because the size of this spreader sort of weight of that tractor is easily pushable in the sense that if I go on a steep field I end up possibly in a pile of pop. So, yeah, all in all, not going very well. So, I've got PDO, but as soon as I get the hydraulics, I have nothing. No pressure, not even trying. Not on the switches, there's nothing engaging, doesn't want to do a damn thing. So I've got a little amber exclamation mark, which is not really telling me jackal. So, why is it always going to happen on Sunday? Always going to happen on Sunday, you can't get hold of anyone, no one's in the right places, no one's answering their pissing phones. So yeah. Fast track's getting parked up. And a little T5 is going to come to the rescue. Coming out of our farm, 
So in all honesty, that little tractor has got some guts, but, but, that spreader is a little bit too big for her. Now, she's all right getting to the end of the load, but she's not the happiest at the beginning. Now I'll explain why. So every little, every little extra thing you ask of a tractor to do takes a little bit more power off it. So getting her to pull it fully loaded, all right, apart from coming up the hill, out of the farm, it was, it was fair, it was a fair drag for it. Do you know what I mean? I want one after it every day like that because yeah, it's a bit harsh on this tractor, you know, to pull that bloody great thing all the time. Now, on top of that, um, once you're in a field and you weren't going to work, dragging it without anything operating, fine. Put engage a PTO, which that will take a certain amount of horses away from dragging. That steadies things down a bit. Oh, one head. Um, then when you start working your spools as well, so it's operating spools, PTO, and pulling. Until she gets to about half empty, um, she's not very happy. You know what I mean? Still did it. And if you go on steady, she'll she'll quite happy do it, but you can't go up the gears and I can't spread at the same speed I would with fast drag just because the power's just not there. Does that make sense? You can't be chopping up that horrible side of your stuff for one. Maybe it's chicken dung or very well composted stuff, you know, the bedding come out of the shed has been for a straw blow already and it chops up lovely, be a different, be a different uh, argument. But still, well impressive that, yeah, she uh, dragged it up in it and spread it. So now this is what she's been doing all day. So yeah, all worked a lot better than I imagined. Oh, and this will be it. So it's been running pretty alright for the day. I've managed to cover three fields, which isn't too bad. And on a flat ground, same as I said earlier, like first beginning bit while it's all heavy, not the keenest tractor on it, she just lacks that little, little bit of power on that first section, but you get rid of some of the weight. And then she's quite happy, but it's only a four cylinder engine, so I'm asking a fair bit of it. I haven't been loading the spreader as full as I would if I had it on back of fast track, which is like sky's the limit and it's much as I can get more. But when I think it's full, put another two on or two bucket loads just, just to be carrying as maximum amount I can actually be carrying. I haven't been doing that. Little bit more sensible though, but I've got stuff out. Oh, it's 
not pissing down the road, which is the main thing. So hopefully the fast track will be sorted tomorrow. And with the fast track sorted tomorrow, it will be um, that will be back on spreader and not so much this one. But it also is handy to know that the T5 is dealing with it because when it comes to us being super busy with moving stuff, I can leave it on the dump for now and it's not to do all the steep, horrible stuff with the fast track on the front. And the T5 can pull around fields which are on the left side. But there aren't many of them. Most of our farm is fairly, fairly hilly. Not ridiculous, but it's hilly enough but also wet, which is killer. And I've taken off like a toboggan on a few of them in the past to sort of know what you need and where. One of my farms I believe taken off from MX110 down a very steep hill. And MX110 is very, very heavy tractor, so it's it can happen to anything. It's just the fast track is so heavy that you just you just feel that little bit safer. So the problem I was having earlier, the blue hydraulic lever in there is causing the problem, but all the hydraulics won't work. So we were guys to go in here, the screen washes, and there is the isolator switch. So the first try, first port of call, is take the switch isolator switch off so the computer completely shuts down because believe it or not, the computers, they are slightly live still when even though the key switch is turned off. So the isolator switch makes it all complete turn off. Tried that, absolutely nothing worked for that one. So that meant T5 had to grow up. But that's what we tried to do. So but what that showed is it's most probably a fuse or trip or something like that is made it go awry. But what the error code has shown up, because error code of all tracks now, can go off to main computer and all the main computers see what all the tracks are doing is the uh, code basically specified that the blue switch or blue hydraulics is constantly pumping basically okay so now i'm in merlot because the only way i can finish cleaning out the shed that i was cleaning out because the jcb is too tall to get in there and the boom is not quite long enough to reach that wall so I'm gonna quickly whip out the last bit of this, bring down a load of bedding, get cows in. So on the front now, which is pretty much the only thing you can see, is our big bin. So this bin's probably about the same capacity as a six ton silage trailer, but it doesn't ever have six ton in it because it's all like straw and hay and dusty stuff and just light stuff. But the fair old, fair old bin, but this is how we uh, transport all the loose chaffy stuff down to um, basically bedding and all the cattle sheds. So you just for carrying bottles.
So not bad day. We have a shed completely clean now. That's bedded up with obviously the chaff material that's from up the other shed out of that big bin that I brought down. Cows are all back in. They've got loads of feed. Uh, I've also put the two heifers which were in that pen over there. Apologies for our ruse. This winter storms have not been friendly to us. There is one of them. And the other one is, I think, run the back. But they are now out there, out of the way of in here, where they've got loads of feed to go from. And we don't have to constantly be feeding up the little racks. So, all in all, good day. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. You can see more of myself and HRS on our social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. Uh, if you want merch, you can find that on eBay. Uh, anything else that I need to remember, don't know, can't remember. If you haven't yet done so, please hit the subscribe, give us a thumbs up, that'd be most appreciated. The more thumbs up we get, the more things will spread, and it will help us out very, very much. But thank you for watching, see you in the next one. Cheers.